expectations. Some people see it as freeing, like you don't have to submit to anything. And this is felt more probably when people already feel fulfilled. Oh, a beautiful dress. I thank you, Phil. Okay. Oh, that's... Feel. So she says, feel, not feel. Huh. When people already feel fulfilled, like you don't have to prove anything because you're there already, or at least you feel like it. It stems from a feeling that you have done enough. Some people get upset because having no expectations can stem from disappointment. Especially in places where competition exists or there is the nature of where you have to be competent. And there is an explanation for it. So this is a study in the 1960s, which was then replicated in the 2010. So that's like 50 years of trying to prove that this still exists up to this moment. And when you do source of paper, it's quite embarrassing to have a source of more than 10 years from the current year. But what else could you do if like nothing else is published similarly to the concept that you want to, let's say, prove or review, but it's not in current times. And yes, the times do change, <laughs> Freud. But maybe modern researchers could just, you know, take a look back to what's already been done and maybe we can cite your papers for future notice. Anyway, walk with me here. The Pygmalion effect coined by Rosenthal and Jacobson in 1966 is a social phenomenon. It states that people's behavior may lead to them becoming self-fulfilling prophecies. Though the original paper was of an extreme result, uh, modern studies show that it does have still a significant value in societal exchange, but it's not as extreme. 50 years later, a 2015 study titled Self-Fulfilling Prophecies in Ability Settings by Weaver, Moses, and Snyder found in the Journal of Social Psychology. It explored if and how expectations from strangers can direct outcomes. So in this study, 127 students, 79 male and 48 female, female were selected as participants. They were selected because they applied for a special credit class wherein they had to volunteer for research purposes. And the subjects knew that the experiment had to do something with basketball, so there might be some kind of bias there. Moving on, the experiment consisted of two phases. Phase 1, participants completed a survey which measured their personalities. And then they were tasked to shoot like 30 free throws. The researchers then extracted the correct number of shooting percentages from the participants. But the participants weren't allowed to watch each other shoot. So this will play a big role later on. In basketball or competitive games, there are usually players and coaches, right? And normally, the word coach refers to someone with some level of expertise. In the second phase, one random participant was selected to be the coach of their team. This coach was then tasked to pick out the better performers in their team to increase their team's score or like average points. But the catch is since the other players weren't allowed to watch other players shoot, the coaches were given a falsified document where the values were assigned at random. It wasn't truly what the players really did score in phase one. So by nature, the coaches looking at paper, they picked out the highest scoring participants to increase the team's score, right? Even though what was written in paper was fake. This introduces a perceived introduction to people you haven't really gauged well yet, but that's how they look like on paper, so they must be good, right? And then after this whole experiment, the, the scores didn't really matter much. The players were assigned to rate their coaches and then rate themselves. And then same goes for the coaches. They were tasked to reevaluate the players that they chose and did not choose and themselves as well. And the results were in. Players who had the fake higher scores tend to view themselves in a more positive light and view their coaches in also a more positive light because, oh, they chose me, even though 
what I scored was different from what they thought I was, but it doesn't matter anyway. I got chosen, and a similar result for the coaches' uh, reevaluations. They gave more opportunities to them to improve their team score. They view those who worked harder or had more opportunities to in a way better light compared to those who had worse scores on paper. A direct quote from the paper was, Perhaps players see their opportunities as a measure of the coach's assessment of their abilities. And the way that coaches allocated shots influenced player performances, which then influenced coaches' evaluation of their players. It's a vicious cycle. This study concluded that giving a player more or fewer opportunities to prove themselves resulted in either better or worse performance, which in turn led to higher or lower ratings towards themselves and towards the person of authority, or vice versa. This experiment, 50 years later, proved a perpetual confirmation between expectations, behaviors, and results. Another quote from the study was, Actual athletes spend several hours every day working with their teams and coaches, allowing for countless repetitions through the expectation cycle. How much pressure would someone with a permanent record have? Repeating the cycle over and over again with different coaches, different expectations, but only one reputation. Us regular folk may not be athletes, but it's true that we all only really have one reputation. And you cannot unmountain do what has already been mountain done. There is power in expectation. Our careers to personal relationships and everything in between. And you can't really demand reciprocity if what you expect is more than what you give out. You can at least try to commit to the standard that you think you're deserving of. Going back to square one, you find yourself as someone who doesn't really care if people expect anything from you or not. If you live a lax lifestyle, that's good because you're content and that's where happiness might come in. There's nothing wrong with it if you don't see anything wrong with it but take it with a grain of salt. But if you do think that you have to step your game up, then maybe it's time to set high or higher standards for yourself and to be your own constant reminder of progress.